hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is tandy today we are going to be watching stuart lee andrew lloyd weber um andrew lloyd weber is is the guy who does the plays um the only association i know <laughs> um is cats because they made a point of putting his name like front and center um Andrew Lloyd Webber. I don't even know if he wants to be tied to that that cat's movie. But um, yeah, let's have a look what he has to say about Andrew. I've heard that he's really pretentious from just bits of people who have met him or been in his house. Like he's a bit of a dickhead. But let's see. Now, Channel Four has obviously betrayed its founding principles. But what about the BBC? Now, in 1927, when Lord Reith was head of the BBC, he said the purpose of the BBC was to educate, inform and entertain. That's a fantastic mantra, educate, inform and entertain. Of course, Lord Reith also described Hitler as magnificently efficient. Yeah. And he forbid the playing of black American jazz music on the grounds that it was filthy. So, you know, educate, inform, entertain. <laughs> that was good. But he supported Hitler and he was a jazz racist. Yeah, a jazz racist. Hitler's racial hatred worked within very strict principles, but Lord Reith liked to improvise. <laughs> He'd come in on different mornings, no one knew which race he was going to hate next. <laughs> I hate the Portuguese today, Lord Reith, you surprised us. Try and keep up. Lord, as well. Lord Reith was a jazz uh. racist and supported Hitler. Lord Reith never commissioned any program as appalling as Andrew Lloyd Webber's Any Dream Will Do. <laughs> the program which the BBC boasts has led to a 300% increase in attendances for West End musical theatre shows, as if that were anything but an atrocity. <laughs> Jesus, somebody's really cracking up. <laughs> supporting Hitler, being a jazz racist, or is it Andrew Lloyd Webber? sitting back in a throne in a throne no less with his weird stretched face and his medieval ecclesiastical tonsure of hair looking like a monk in a wind tunnel i'm not familiar with how he looks sitting there smiling to himself as he mentally calculates an estimated 10 million pounds of extra ticket sales drunk drunk on the smell of his own farts his own cold grey farts or musicals as he will insist on calling <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber in a throne drunk on the smell of his own cold grey farts a wind tunnel monk king Andrew Lloyd Webber rich rich on your purloined gold freely given by you in ignorance to Andrew Lloyd Webber great art should be mysterious great art should be opaque and of course it's possible to make an early Saturday night game show format out of an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, because an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical is already facile. <laughs> but you couldn't invite the public to use a telephone voting system to cast a production of Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. Show that solves a problem like Maria and made Joseph's dream come true is back. But this time around, we've got What is this? A talent show. What the fuck is this? Characters from 20th century experimental theatre. From Waiting for Godot, it's the Bible. Anyway, it <laughs> just stopped with uh, Stuart Lee and cut to whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> That's so weird. Anyway, um,. Is that Andrew Lloyd Webber? Maybe it's him. I don't I don't know what Andrew Lloyd Webber looks like. Let me just have a look. That was not Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um he looks different. Um 
wow. I mean, now that I'm taking it in what Stuart Lee said about him when he was describing him, I'd say accurate. He's only 76. Oh. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. If you do have any recommendations, please uh, pop them in the comments. And yeah, hope to see you next one. Bye.